You were part of a select group of actors, I think, who appeared in virtually all of the CBS programs in the 1950s. CBS was the network that hung on the longest Just to with radio. dramatic shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the workshop and escape and so Yes, like and then do you Suspense. remember Armour Star Theater on Saturday mornings? Mm-hmm. You, I'm sure, like so many of the other actors out here, were doubling on some of the shows and oh, yes. were doing more than one show in a day. You just say you hadn't really arrived until you had a conflict. <laughs> <laughs> I think that radio is the ideal medium for a performer because if 12 million people were listening, you were giving 12 million performances. It's too bad that it had to go, but it was a lot of fun while it lasted. <laughs> Although the serial went off the air in 1952, in May of 1954, a new audition record was produced for CBS in Hollywood. With Russell Thorson back in Los Angeles, he carried over the role of Jack, with Ben Wright as Reggie, and Parley Bear as Doc. In the old days of radio, I could almost tell the kind of part it was going to be by the director who hired me. Some saw me as a rural hay raker, and somebody else saw me as a booming second-rate politician. It's good that people don't all think alike. <laughs> You're playing the like the Indian said, everybody would want his squaw. <laughs> <laughs> the Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller I'm watching the maestro because he's the focal point for everything that's happened since we came to bury your dead and everything that's going to happen I say huh what's the matter look creeping up through the greasewood over there where Reggie creeping toward the maestro's window just a shadow in the moonlight yeah yeah see it Jack yes down on all fours you think it's an animal no, it's a man. Right. Quiet. I caught the glint of something in his hand. Oh, a gun, huh? I think the maestro's about to receive a visit from Jumping Dick. I say, that's Jumping Dick? That would be my guess. Well, uh, what we're waiting for? To see what happens. But lucky, Jack. If jump, Jumping Dick should up and shoot the maestro... We'll stop him before it goes that far. But if we ain't in time... That'll be the maestro's hard luck. That's for dollars, too, Jack. I mean, if the maestro's got our $25,000 hidden away and he's killed... We'll never see it again. Don't forget that Jumping Dick knows that as well as we do. How do you mean? Well, if Dick's after the money, he won't dare kill the maestro until he knows where it's hidden. Yeah. What's the matter with us, Reggie? He's right under the window. Man, if the maestro's nervous now, think what he's going to be in a minute. Watch. He's going to stand up. Yeah. There he goes. Hey, did you see that? The maestro jumped a foot. Come on. Let's creep down where we can hear what they're saying. Yeah. Let's do that. Take it easy. Not a sound. And as I was saying, I hope you don't mind if I just stand here in the window and point my pistol at the middle of your barrel. In heaven's name, man, put up that gun. Nope. I feel more comfortable with it in my hand. Is this a hold-up? Yeah, in a way, you might say it was. But I have nothing you could want. Oh, don't think so, huh? But I haven't. I arrived here absolutely destitute. Packard had to pay my room and board. Destitute, huh? Positively. Emmanuel, you're barking up the wrong tree. Ever hear uh, 25,000 good round United States dollars? $25,000. That's what I said. 25,000 of them. That's... That's fantastic. Yeah, it is, kind of. You think a fellow as smart as Packard would have more sense than to carry that much spondulics around his waist, wouldn't you? Packard was carrying $25,000. Was is right. How did you know? 
Dry Gulch Mary listens at keyholes, and what Mary knows, the whole town of Bury Your Dead knows. So? Yep. Yeah. Now you think I have the money. I know you got it. That is an insult. Well, you having money is an insult? You are branding me a, a, a thief. Well, if you are a thief, what's the hurt of branding you of what? That's ridiculous. I never stole anything in, in my life. Oh, come on, come on. Is that $25,000 more important to you than your life? You, you'd kill me. Like I'd kill a fly. Wait, wait, I, I've got to think. You've got to think? Yes, yes. Nasha, Nasha, come quickly. Hey, what the tarnation is that for? Nasha. Oh, what's eating you? That Russian girl's dead and buried. Nasha, come back. Yeah, not now. Look here, you big fat tub of hog fat. If you think you can scare Jumping Dick off with a lot of truck about dead folks are coming back. She's coming. She's coming. The deuce she is. Nasha is coming. Nasha is coming back to this earth. There's no use. You can't get any closer than this. But, Jack, we can't hear nothing here. But we're close enough to see everything that goes on. Queer, huh? Maestro standing there with his eyes closed. If Dick's smart, he'll watch out. But Dick's got the drop on him. And the Maestro's cooking up something. Don't forget, he's a smart magician. I say, Dick doesn't seem to be as sure of himself. Yeah. Look at him, wiping his face with his handkerchief. You suppose he's losing his nerve? Dick doesn't. Hold it. What? Look what's coming through the moonlight. I say, hey, it's a girl in a white dress. The girl in the white dress. The girl Dick's daughter saw last night. Hey, maybe it's Laura yourself. No. no she's too small. Doesn't she remind you of someone? But she's too far away. That lithe movement, floating rhythm. That's a dancer. Jack, not Nasha. Isn't that who she reminds you of? But that's crazy. We helped bury Nash ourselves at five o'clock this afternoon. You don't have to tell me that. And you said yourself she was dead. I know it. And I still say that looks like Nash. And you're the fella that don't believe in ghosts. Watch it. She's coming up behind Dick at the window. Hey, hadn't we ought to warn him? Or keep still. Just watch. But if a doggone phantom was a creeping up behind look, me... Look, look. She's standing right behind him. With her arm raised. Jack, did you see that? Dick went down like he'd been struck by lightning. All she done was lower her arm and he just crumbled up. Look. Look at her go. Just a floating away in the moonlight. But Jack, shouldn't we go after her? Do you think you could catch that out there in the desert at night? Yeah. That's one thing I ain't going to do. Chase ghosts. Oh, come on. Let's go down. Yeah. Look at the maestro leaning out the window looking down at Dick's body. Keep quiet. Till we get right up to the window. Well, my son. What? Well, what's that? That was the best performance you've given us yet. Oh, you saw. You were watching. Yes. Then you witnessed the return of Nasha. Is uh, is that what we saw? You saw the resurrection of Nasha from the grave. You can say the doggonedest things that ever come out of a man's mouth. Yeah, give me a flashlight, Doc. Let's have a look at Dick. Yeah. But where did she go, and uh, why did she run away? Run? The spirit of man has no need for legs. You still haven't said where she went. Back to the grave from when she came. Will you stop talking like that? Back to the grave. Here, Doc. Give me a hand. Is he dead? No, but he has a good-sized goose egg on his head. Goose egg? Yes, he was clubbed over the head. But Jack, we didn't see any club in her hand. She just raised her arm and lowered it. We saw her arm because it was white. The club was probably a piece of dark wood that wouldn't show. Yes, but if she needed a club... Exactly. If she needed a club, she wasn't a phantom. You're a stiff-necked man, Packer. Maybe. But that wasn't any ghost that hit Dick over the head. It was a flesh-and-blood girl. But, Jack, there ain't no flesh-and-blood girls in Barry you dead, except in Laurie. And you said yourself it wasn't her. Besides, Laurie wouldn't sneak up behind her own father and bop them on the cranium. No, it wasn't Laura. Then who the heck was it? I don't know. It was the spirit of Nasha. She came back to protect me. Protect you from what? From that man who threatened me with, with a gun. Why did he threaten you? He said it was a hold-up. Jumping Dick was holding you up? So he said. But uh, 
What did he want? I, I told him I was destitute, but he, he refused to believe me. Mm-hmm. I see. He said he would kill me as quickly as he'd kill a fly. I was in desperate circumstances, so I called on Nasha... And she came. Well, somebody sure enough came all right. Hey, Jack, I don't like what's going on. I wish Where's we could... Hey! Oh, somebody, somebody, please! Oh, that's Laura. Here. Yeah. Here we are. Oh, wait for me. Wait for me. Valley frightened. Here. Yeah. Here, do you see us? Yes. What a most terrible thing. I just saw the most terrible thing. Get you get oh, ready. Right. No, no, I'm all right. I'm just so frightened. Here. Yeah. Here, yeah, just let her sit down. Oh, oh what's that on the ground? Your, uh, your father. Oh, no. Oh, he's all right. Just a bump on the head. Are you sure? Sure. Now, what's the matter? What scared you? Oh, you... You won't believe me. Tell us and see. I, I was coming up the trail from Hawk Cabin to the boarding house. I came face to face with Nasha. Hey, you saw her? Yes. Yes, she was the girl in the white flowing robes. The girl I saw last night. How close were you? So close I could have reached out and touched it. You saw her face? Yes. Yes, it was Nash. Now, will you believe? Huh? What'd you say? It was someone in a white dress that hit your father over the head. Huh? The maestro's been trying to tell us it was Nash. Yes, yes, I saw her. Well, what happened after you saw her? She, she, she just vanished off into the moonlight. I was so frightened, I thought I'd lost my sense. Joe, Jack, there, there's no answer to that. The ways of the mystic are beyond comprehension. Jack, when you reckon the next freight train will be coming through? Don't be a fool, Dad. Well, I'm a fool, because... I don't want to go mucking around with dead folks. You're a fool because you believe there are any dead folks. Well, all right, then. But go on and explain things to me. I can't. And neither can I. There are nobody else except the maestro here. Now you are talking reason. Dead people don't rise from the grave. But we seen her and Lori seen her. Dead people don't rise from the grave. You can prove that, Packard. I can. And I'm going to. I would give much to be present when you do it. How and when I do it will be none of your affair. Come on, let's get out of here. Are we going to just leave Jump and Dick laying there? His daughter and the maestro are with him, aren't they? As I say, a bit inhuman, what? We've got other things to do. Come on. I don't. Well, what we got to do that's so all fired important? Prove the girl who struck down Dick wasn't Nash. Yeah, but how? Reggie, you know where those shovels are? Hmm? I say, shovels? Yes. We're going to open Nash's grave and prove. Prove what? I don't know. What do grave robbers prove? Some of us see each other frequently, not as frequently as we would like, but it's such a wondrous thing to meet here at a joyous occasion when it's not a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> would you please uh, stay seated and sign some autographs for a few minutes? Charlie Bear was most known for playing Chester Proudfoot on Gunsmoke. By that time, we were recorded ahead, and we were all very grateful that we had enough shows recorded in the can, so to speak, that we did not know when we were doing our last one. I don't think it would have been a very enjoyable day for us to go in there knowing that this was it. It was kind of we had, I missed five out of about 530, as a lot of shows have done now. I think we entered areas that Westerns, indeed, that radio shows uh, had not entered before. There was a little of the psychological involved, and there were instances where sometimes right did not triumph, mm -hmm. as in the real world. And the thing about Gunsmoke, it became a labor of love for all of us. I know I still have a big library of Western fact and fiction mm -hmm. of that era. We were a pretty intact group there. We had the same director, the same assistant director, the same script girl, the same engineer, the same sound crew. The music was the same, and uh, in addition to the four regulars, there probably were not more than 20 or 25 people mm -hmm. who were used. It formed a pretty tight nucleus, stock company, as it were, for that and the show. If we had been given just an outline, I think that Bill and Howard and Georgia and I and some of the regulars, I think we could have ad-libbed a show if... if it was that mm -hmm. tight and that close? Yeah. You were so we got close to know to each it. other's uh -huh. timing so well, mm -hmm. and anticipate each other's thoughts. I, I remember little things like, well, Dylan had told Chester to put some wood on the fire 
and the sound of the logs going on there. And I went, <coughs> he said, well, get out of the smoke. <laughs> Just as an ad lib, huh? <laughs> Green, uh -huh. said, you should have got dry. And then we went on with whatever <laughs> we were doing. And things like that. All right, put the shovels down. The first thing we've got to do is get that ton of stone off the top of the grave. Well, Stella, don't that hunk of rock right on top of the grave just about prove Nash ain't been tampered with? It's quite. It hasn't been moved, Jack, so the grave hasn't been opened. And if the grave hasn't been opened, Nash is still in there. I thought you were the boys who believed we saw Nash hit jumping Dick over the head. Well, not any flesh and blood, Nash, Jack. Look, Doc. If Dick was clubbed by any Nash, it was a flesh and blood Nash. Then you think it is some other girl floating around in a white dress and not Nash at all. That's the most logical answer. Well, let's find out. Come on, get hold of this rock. But Jack, if you think it was another girl, why are you so anxious to open Nash's grave? Yeah, answer that, fella. I want to make sure. Well, darned if I don't think opening graves is a pretty serious business just to satisfy your curiosity. Are you fellas going to give me a hand with this rock? Mm, quite. Well, how about it, Doc? Well, okay. But I'd sure put up a holler if anybody went to monkeying around my grave once I got myself buried. All right, all right. I'll grab hold. If we take it together, we can roll it right down off the door. All right, let's try. Ready, Doctor? I reckon. All right, then. Let's go. Up with it. More. More. Keep her coming, Reggie. She's moving. Look out, Jack. It's rolling your way. Let it roll. Little one. There. Oh. There she goes. Hold it, Reggie. That's plenty. That's quite. Ooh, wee. Man, that's worse. I say yes. Nobody uh, but three guys with strong backs and weak brains would have tackled it in the first place. Oh, you admit it, huh? Oh, you mean the lame brain part? Well, it ain't so lame that I'm going to move that rock back on the grave again after we get through here. We'll take care of that when we come to it. Now then, the shovels. A nice moonlight night for grave opening. Yes, we got several things to be thankful for. Such as what? Well, fairly good light. Sand will be easy to move. Coffin isn't buried very deep. I so we've got company. The wolves are out. Yeah. Look you over yonder in that ridge. That old he wolf brindle. Well, let him watch if he wants to. No one else knows we're out here. You sure about that? I watched pretty careful. No one followed us out, and certainly no one knew we were coming. Here, give me one of those shovels, Reggie. Quite. Right. I'll take the other. Oh, no, no, not at all. You could be relieved, man, Doc. I'll start here, Jack. Let's go. No, this is no job at all. I think the top of the casket's only about three feet down. I'm pretty doggone shallow burying. I noticed it at the time. Go on, fella. Holler your head off. This here reminds me of a story my grandma on my mama's side used to tell down in Texas about a woman that she knowed when she was a little girl. The meanest woman had ever sucked on a corn cob pipe. Chewed snuff, too. But, man, she was the original hard-hearted Hannah. Mean. She put five husbands in their graves before she was 40. Well, anyway, according to my grandma, she upped and died when, when my grandma was still a little girl. They give her a decent burying because there wasn't nothing else to do with it. And then everybody sort of breathed a sigh of relief on account that she is safe on the ground. Uh, you want I should relieve you, Jack? No, no. What's your story? Yeah. Well, y years went by, and my grandma growed up into a woman. Then things changed a lot. Decided to run a state highway or something right plumb through the old graveyard. Well, that being the case, naturally all the buried folk had to be moved. And one of them was this cantankerous old woman. Well, sir, you know what they found when he opened her grave? There was nothing left of her in the box but one thing. No bones, no clothes, nothing but just one thing. And you know what that was? What did I say? What? Her heart. And it had turned to stone. No. I swear to my grandma, it had pure stone. You talk about your hard-hearted woman. Hold up for a minute, Reggie. Uh, well, how's it coming? I'm making good progress. Uh, let me take over. No, 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 not at all. I haven't even raised a sweat. Well, how about you, Jack? If you insist. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Well, hey, you're getting right down to it. Come on, Ray. <laughs> right on. 
Yeah, there's one thing. I'll never think of burying your dead without picturing that old wolf over on the ridge against the moon. Uh-oh, burying your dead's going to mean something a lot more important than that to me. If we don't get our 25,000 potatoes back... We don't leave this place without it, I can promise you that. Well, if you want my opinion, we should ought to be looking for it instead of messing around Nash's grave. Who knows? Maybe we'll find the money buried here with Nasher. Hey, I say... You mean that? Why not? Money disappeared about the time Nasha died. How easy for the maestro to have planted the money belt on the girl's body. Bury it with the idea of returning when the excitement had died down and dig it up again. Well, now that gives me something to dig for. Get it going, Reggie. Right, oh. Dog gone. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? Of course, it's only a theory. Well, that's a fairly good one, too. Hey, let's cut out the talking and just dig. Yeah, suits me. <laughs> Hey, say, hey, I've hit something. Yeah, yeah, so have I. Good work. Clark, climb up out of the hole, huh? I can get the rest of it better alone. Yeah. About all you got to do is just scrape what's left of sand off the top. That's quite. You know, I think I can scrape better the rest off with my hands. All right. Well, come on, Doc. Yeah. That's it again. Better clean it off around the edges. We don't want sand pouring down into the coffin when we lift the lid. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I wish they hadn't nailed a top down. What'd you do with that hammer, Jack? Over there where my coat's lying. Okay, I'll get it. Oh, bring the flashlight, too. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's good enough, I think, Reggie. I <sighs> say. You know, Jack, don't you feel a bit ghoulish? It isn't the pleasantest task in the world. No, I mean, a bit indecent exposing her to human eyes again. She's finished with this world, and she deserves to be left in peace. Oh, very nice. But we want our $25,000. Mm, it's quiet. Well, here you are, Jack. Okay, hold the light while I see if I can get the claw of this hammer over the head of some of these nails. Yes, if I remember, there are only four. One in each corner. Mm-hmm. Well, that's one of them. Yeah, this one's easier. We get this one, I think we can just pull up the lid. Well, go ahead and get her. Well, now we are getting somewhere. Can you get your fingers under the lid now, Reggie? I think so. There, yeah, quite. I got it. Well, Nasher, sorry to have to do this, but here goes. Hold the flash, Doc. Pull up, Reggie. Right over. Uh, 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 there. Hey, hey, look. Well, I'll be... She's gone. She isn't here. Hey, what's going on here anyway? Here, let me have that flashlight. But I say, it's impossible, Jack. No one could possibly have got her out without moving that big rock we put on top of the grave. And nobody moved a rock. We know that. And there's... Th- 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 then there's only one thing that could have happened. Well, same being what? The coffin was buried without Nasha in it. That isn't true, Reggie. Just before the coffin was nailed shut and lowered into the grave, the lid was lifted and we all saw her. You darn told me we did. But it's so absolutely impossible. It couldn't have happened. The coffin nailed shut under three feet of sand with a huge rock weighing at least a ton on top of the grave. Well, it did happen. Feller, if you want to ask me, the maestro's got some powerful magic to working on his side. The maestro's just too smart for us. And we still ain't got our 25000 back. What you keep looking in that casket for with a flashlight? You don't expect to find Nasha down one of them cracks, do you? I don't know what I expect to find. But there's one thing. There is. Now we know that Nasha's still alive. And that it was she who hit Jumping Dick over the head. You think Laurie really did see Nasha face to face then? I know it. But, Jack, you examined Nasha before she was buried. You swore up and down she was dead. I know. That's what makes me so mad. I'd let the maestro get away with that right under my nose. What you mean, fella? Look, it's a medical fact that a person can be hypnotized into a semblance of death. Suspended animation, no respiration, no pulse. To all appearance, lifeless. And I'd let that maestro get away with it. Well, she sure looked dead to me. Well, at least we've exposed his trick before it's too late. Exposed his trick, huh? That's what I said, exposed his trick. Well, maybe you have, but I ain't. Well, I couldn't explain how Nasha got out of that nailed-up coffin if I was to swing for it. It's another one of his tricks. I don't know how he did it, but you can bet there's an answer, and it hasn't got anything to do with mysticism. That's crying. And what do we do now? We go back and face the maestro with what we do know. Put it up to him to return our money or take the consequences. Now, you're a talking fella. And if he doesn't talk fast enough to suit us... Jack. Jack, look out there in the moonlight. It's a woman. She's coming this way. Crouch down. I say, it's Jumping Dick's daughter, Laura. Well, what the heck's she doing out here? Hold it. She's coming up to the grave. Oh! What a grave! Now she's grave's been opened. So what? Oh, no! Who are you? Jack Packard. Oh, but the grave is... Don't worry. There's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. That's what I said. What are you doing out here? I, I've been looking for you. For me? Why? Something's happened at the boarding house. The maestro's disappeared. Disappeared? That's ridiculous. There's no place for him to go. I don't know. I just know he's gone. The freight train stopped up at the side in about an hour ago. What's that? 
Did you say a freight train? Yes, I think it's picking up the boxcar. You can. Doc Reggie, did you hear that? There's a freight train up on the siding. Has it gone yet? No, but... Doc it... Reggie, come on. Hey, fella, what's eating you? Freight train, you fool. The maestro's disappeared. Come on. Come on, we got to catch that freight train. CBS didn't pick up the series, and I Love a Mystery went off the air for good. A new Carlton Morse adventure thriller. It's still standing on the siding. I see the headlights. If we missed that freight train, we're all washed up. Well, it ain't got away from us yet. And we've still got a piece to go. But, Jack, I don't understand. Why is this fleet so important? Because our $25,000 is on that freight train. Oh, I see. Hey, how'd it get on there? Well, didn't you hear Laura say the maestro disappeared? Where do you suppose he went? You mean the maestro's pulling out a very dead on that freight train? You bet he's pulling out. Hey, let's step on it. Pull the train whistle. Does that mean... Come on, come on. There she goes. I can hear her. Stop talking. Maybe we can get over the tracks ahead of her. Oh, bless the bloody dog. I keep stumbling. If that fat magician gets away with our money... Save your breath. Run like you never ran before. It's going pretty fast. Can we make it? We've got to make it. Take the first empty box car. Hey, hey, here's one coming up. Okay, grab it. Reggie, you go first. Right on. Here I go. Get in, Jack. Get in. Hurry up, fella. Yeah. Give me a hand, Reggie. I got you. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Give me a hand. Faster, Doc. Run faster. I got him. Jack, Jack. Grab hold of his collar. He's losing his footing. Hold him. Hang on to him. There. All right, now pull him up. Up. Uh, he comes. <laughs> Ah, there he is. Oh, I say, Doc, are you all right? Am I all right? I'm bruised and battered. The desert come up and wham me three times before you fellas got me pulled in. You, you're lucky you didn't go under the wheels. I, I was so close once, a, a wheel throwed grease in my face. Oh, Joe, that's bad business. Well, we're here, and and, and that's all that counts. Oh. Oh, I say, we certainly pulled out a barrier dead in a hurry. It was me. I guess about had a stomach full of that place. Say... You know something? What's uh, that? This is the same freight car we arrived in. Oh, I see. It is? Huh? Yes. Turn on your flash, Reggie. Oh, quiet. Now, look here. This is the same packing box the maestro used to sit on. Well, I'll be doggone. The freight train must have stopped to pick up this car. Oh, I say, that's why they were here so long. Fixing the wheel that was frozen. Probably. Save the flashlight, Reggie. We may right. need it later. Right. Jack, I've I just been thinking. What's the matter now? Well, supposing the maestro ain't on this freight train after all. He's got to be. But supposing he ain't. Then what are we going to do? If he's not on this freight, I'll eat it. Well, that ain't saying what we'll do if he ain't. Well, the only thing is to catch the next freight back to bury your dead. But I know he's on it. Well, what makes you so sure, Jack? Well, he disappeared from the boarding house. He's so fat and heavy, he can't get around in the sand. There's no place for him to go. Besides, what would you do if you were stuck in a place like bury your dead with 25 grand that didn't belong to you? You tried to slip away the first opportunity you got. Yeah, and he thought he could get away on this freight alone... While we was out there in the desert digging up Nash's coffee. Certainly. Well, it sure makes sense, all right. Uh, mind if I join the conversation? Hey, who said that? Just me. Well, who are you? What are you doing in this boxcar? Well, goodness, ain't I got as much right in here as anybody? Turn the flash on him, Reggie. Quiet. Hey, hey, what are you trying to do? Blind the fellow to take that light out of my eyes? Looks like a bindle stick. Okay, Reg, just turn off the light. I am a knight of the open road. <laughs> yeah? My name is Swenson Swenson. Well, how do you do, Swenson Swenson? I'm Jack Packard. Jack Packard, eh? Yes. These two men with me are Doc Long and Reggie York. Ain't got a can of beans on you, I don't guess. Right not. We, uh, we came away in a hurry. Yeah, I kind of noticed that. Didn't I hear you say there was a fat man on this freight with $25,000? Oh, you heard that, huh? Well, that's what it sounded like. Jack. Yeah? If we was to throw this sweet out of this boxcar, who would know the difference? My goodness, why you want to do that? Then there wouldn't be anybody on this freight that knew about that money but just us. Good gracious, but you are an impulsive fella. How about it, Jack? No, 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 wait a minute. You got me all wrong. I'm just Swenson Swenson, knight of the open road. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Sakes alive, what would a dirty old bum like me want with $25,000? What about it, Jack? Besides, uh, 
What $25,000? I never heard a word about it. Goodness gracious, I'm so deaf in both ears, I couldn't hear what you said if you was to shoot a cannon off in my ear. <laughs> you made a big mistake mentioning that money, Swenson. Yeah, please, mister. I'm just a poor old sweet trying to get along. Just forget I ever said anything, and I'll forget it, too. Well, I don't know. What were you doing in this particular car, anyway? Uh, just riding. Where are you from? I jumped this freight at Needles. Then how did you get in this car? Didn't I just say I come from Needles? Yes, but this car didn't come from Needles. It didn't? You know as well as I do. This car's been parked out on that siding at Barrier Dead for almost a week. Yeah, sure. I know that. Well? Well, it's like this. The car I was riding in up front, well, there's three other fellas in it, see? And what's that got to do with it? Well, they are putting on a party. They got a dozen containers of canned heat. They're drinking canned heat? Yeah, canned heat and which hate. Oh, look here. Yeah, sure, they are. Uh, well, they was getting pretty rough and noisy, so when the freight stopped, I slipped out and climbed into this car. I see. Well, so what's the matter with that? Nothing. Just the same, I think we'd better search you. Search me? Yes. Oh, now, wait a minute. Suppose... I could be a help to you, boys. In what way? Suppose I could tell you where to find the fat man. The maestro? Is that his name? You know where he is? You bet you my life I do. Where? Is it a bet? If I tell you where to find the fat boy, do you lay off of me? And you'll forget you ever heard about that money? Oh, what do I want with money? Goodness gracious, if I had money, then I couldn't ride freight trains no more. It's a deal. Where's the maestro? Back there. Back where? In the end of the car... Him and the girl. Hey, you mean the maestro and Nasha are in this car? All you have got to do is go back and see for yourself. Well, I've all the doggone luck. Come on, let's go back. Reggie. Yes? Stay here with Swenson. Watch him. Right on. Here, give me the flashlight. Come on, Doc. Well, and ain't he going to be glad to see us? If that Swede's lying, I'll turn on the flash, Jack. Who is that? Nasha. Nasha, are you alive, honey? You are Doc Long? Of course I'm Doc Long. Where's the maestro? There he is, lying down. The maestro is asleep. Or pretending to be asleep. Let's see what a kick in the pants will do. Oh, 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 what, what's that? You dare kick the maestro. Here, here, what is this? Maestro, this Jack Packard kick you. Jack Packard? Yes. Shall I stick a knife in him? Jack Packard, what are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same question. I couldn't stomach bury your dead another minute. When the freight stopped, I decided to leave. Well, you were the only thing in bury your dead that interested us, so when you left, we came along, too. And you kicked me. That's right. Insult on insult. Shall I stick a knife into him, maestro? I will do worse than that. <laughs> Such as turning me into a wolf, I suppose. I have performed wonders, and you still do not believe. That's right. I have turned Nasha into a wolf. I've turned a wolf into a man. Nasha died and was buried, and I brought her back from the grave. Was you sure not dead, sugar? I was dead. And you do not call me sugar. There's just one thing you haven't mentioned, Maestro. What is that? The most important thing of all. You made our $25,000 disappear. You talk riddles. Oh, no, I don't. You made it disappear, and now you're going to perform an even greater miracle and make it return. Ah, I haven't your money. I think you have. Money means nothing to me. Man who can perform marvels beyond the ken of man. You're going to return that 25000 or you're going to be about 250 pounds lighter when we arrive at our next stop. Threats, threats. What do they mean to me? Jack ain't kidding, Maestro. We're going to have them potatoes back if we have to take you apart limb by limb until we find them. Your game's up. Now give us that money belt. Fools! Stand up. You take your hands off to Maestro. Stand up. Take your hands off me. I, I will get to my feet. And hurry up about it. Ah, I spit on you. Doc, keep your eye on Nasha. I'll take care of the Maestro. You hear that, sweetheart? Dog! Pig swine! <laughs> Ain't you just full of words? Come on, come on, get to your feet. It, it, it is difficult. A man of my weight must move slowly. Well, keep uh, moving. Uh, I will help you, uh, maestro. Keep away from me, Nasha. Yeah, come on uh, back over here. You do not touch me. Uh, no. I will uh, stick a knife in you. You will, sure now? Uh, there, I am standing. Now then, I'm going to give you one more chance. Will you return that money? Money, the root of all evil... That's your answer? That is my answer. All right. Put your hands over your head. What's that? I said put your hands over your head. No, you do not, maestro. You do not. And why should I put my arms over my head? Don't argue. Do it. But I know on good authority that you're not armed. No, I'm not armed. But I am. Hey, Jack. I am armed with a gun and I shoot well. Well, what you know about that? Put up that gun, you fool. Don't order me around, Packard. I am master of this situation. So you want to add another murder to your list? No. No, I don't want to. 
but I don't mind. Hey, you admit you're a killer. Why not? You'll never live to tell it. (laughs) 